Well, thank you, Shahid, and uh, welcome to everybody also from PwC. I'm going to talk to you about one of the most dangerous killers of CLM projects, and this is product complexity. Um, we heard about uh, complexity in Willem's presentation already. Complexity is a um, um, threat to growth and value, and that's exactly what we, what we experience as well. Um, and I would li also like to present uh, some approaches how to master this complexity um, along the life cycle um, and get you ready for successful CLM introduction projects. You might know PwC more from um, the accounting and, 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 and legal side, uh, but there's a strong and rapidly growing arm within PwC uh, taking care of operations, operations consulting. So we cover the full value chain from R&D uh, to manufacturing, uh, to procurement, to supply chain, data analytics, um, as well as um, um, PLM and um, SAP implementations. So very operational. Um, and we partner with, with big uh, companies like Microsoft uh, and one of our uh, prime partners is Configit since many years uh, working closely together. Um, we are not only taking care of uh, large companies, enterprises, but also about more and more about mid-sized companies who also suffer a lot from uh, com com complexity. We just came up with a, with a um, brand new study on R&D uh, focusing on 2030 and uh, identified what are the, the key challenges uh, that companies are facing today in R&D and, and beyond. And interestingly, um, the challenges are cost, complexity, and agility. So th those are the three major factors that, uh, and, and challenges that, that companies are facing. Uh, and I think configuration management is one of the key um, um, things to, to overcome those challenges. What is complexity? I asked ChatGPT. Uh, as Hendrik does as well. Um, and maybe this is a good picture that, you, that you're seeing here. Um, you can compare it to a, a game of chess uh, with a number of figures, but those figures are not visible. Uh, they are disappearing in the fog, partly. And on top of that, those figures are connected with invisible rubbers um, that make other figures moving when you move one. And then on top of that, those figures are um, moving by themselves. So, um, so the whole thing is moving and you cannot really control it. And this is, uh, I think, a, a good symbol of, 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 uh, of, of complexity. Um, and that's exactly what you experience in, in companies as well. So you have many stakeholders doing unpredictable moves, influencing others without knowing it. So I think that's a very comparable situation um, that, that we are typically facing. And all starts out with the product with the product complexity. So when you do have complex products and complex product portfolios uh, in the beginning of the value chain, of course driven by your customers, that results in complex sourcing and, uh, and, and procurement processes, which again uh, result in complex manufacturing assembly processes. Um, so complexity ex is expanding and, and multiplying uh, and it goes on this, uh, this journey, so ramp up is getting, getting more and more complex, testing and validation is, uh, is getting more difficult. Um, you have complex global supply chains, um, all the way down to spare part handling. Just imagine complexity uh, injected into your, into your product portfolio, you will have to take care of uh, those spare parts for the next 10, 20, 30 years, depending on the industry. Uh, so let's take complexity and eliminate it uh, as early on as you can in the, in the very beginning. Think about the product first uh, before you enter such a, such a journey. One of the key measures to do so is modernization and standardization. So uh, get away from individual products that are in handcrafted uh, as we saw in the, in the Penguin case before. Uh, think about a modular platform, um, a standardized set of reusable components that are combined and recombined and configured into very individual products. You, you can do customizing on it, but it must, it must stem from a, from a common base, uh, which m increases margins on your side, uh, minimizes engineering efforts um, by reusing as much as you can, uh, but still delivering what the customer 
uh, desires. Let's make that a bit, bit more concrete. That's a penguin case that you typically have. You have individual products, product lines, um, each engineered and crafted uh, uh, individually with separate bill of bills of material and variants that you have to manage um, and not too much interaction. Um, what would Mr. Deer uh, do, uh, as Henry called it? Um, they would rather go for a modular system, having a common base of, of components of bricks uh, that can be combined and reused, which make up the same, the same types of uh, products, maybe even more through the, the, the flexibility. Um, but you can combine and recombine them, but, but based on the common platform that you, that you can use, which then, of course, is reflected in the, in, in the PLM systems, in the configuration systems, and so on. Uh, so you simplify um, your life and you, s you simplify the, the full value chain as you see it here. Uh, you're faster to market uh, because you, you configure instead of engineer. You have a le less variance to manage within your portfolio. You save a lot of engineering hours. I come up, up with some examples uh, um, quickly. Um, of course, you can use scale, scale effects in procurement, which saves your, your cost. Uh, you have easier assembly processes, manufacturing processes, validation, um, product test quality. All those things are simplified, um, all the way down to spare parts handling. So, uh, th so the whole value chain is, is profiting from a, a reduction of, of complexity. The interesting and tricky things, although, um, although you, you inject complexity in the beginning, um, the bill is paid later in the, in the process. Typically, the, uh, the supply chain, the manufacturing, uh, the logistics people, they pay the bill of complexity although it's maybe in, um, initiated in, in the product development. So that means uh, to, to tackle that problem, um, you need to get all those people on board uh, in the early phase um, of defining and uh, reducing complexity within your product, product portfolio. And the interesting thing is also, it's independent of industry. So it, it works for uh, computer tomographers, uh, tomography for Airbus uh, cabins. It works for data centers and from Google, uh, sensors, uh, coffee machines, ThyssenKrupp. So they are the same problem uh, and, the, and, and, and can follow the same approach. Um, let me show you two examples, very extreme and different industries. Let's start out with, uh, with more mass product uh, uh, produced um, products like, like a dryer. Uh, um, a topic we took care about quite a few years ago, starting out with a with a left situation as you see it here. The existing product was a probably some of you have it in, in your basement uh, was, a, was, a, was a dryer uh, from from Bosch Siemens house, household appliances, a beautiful uh, designed product with a lot of variants, uh, with a lot of components, a lot of we saw about 70 different suppliers on a part list of 140 components. Um, and a long, long, long assembly process. Um, as you see on the, on the left side, very few uh, um, uh, modules before. Um, what we uh, decided to do is that we, we cannot continue like this. Complexity is killing us. We have new regions to cover. Uh, it's growing and growing. So let's do something. Um, and what, what happened is to reduce this complexity by modularization, by reducing this, um, uh, this complexity into five, six core modules that were dedicated to certain uh, system suppliers, so reducing those 70 suppliers to five or six uh, core suppliers, um, reducing the assembly line drastically, um, and uh, at the end of the day, reducing cost by 28%. Let's jump to another example, to an example from the from the chemistry industry, huge plants, uh, multi-million, uh, sometimes multi-billion projects, um, and they had the same the same effect: uh, handcrafting individual orders. Um, every order was a was a, was a, uh, about a hundred hundred thousand uh, hours of engineering efforts, uh, and the same situation. They said it's not possible to continue like this. Uh, we have more and more uh, orders and um, de demands and tenders uh, to follow. Um, let's change something. And it was exactly the same approach. Modernization of the plant, uh, breaking the plant, the complex plant down into, in this case, it was 29 different modules, uh, which were pre-configured, we called it pre-configured pre plant concept, pre-configured and uh, 
possible to, to, to bring them together, configure those items into, uh, into an individually designed plant. Uh, and already the first uh, contract saved about 11% of, of, uh, of cost. So the approach is uh, really transferable to, to each and every uh, company. Currently we're doing a project in the service industry. Uh, so it works from very small to very large companies. It works from, uh, from mass production to systems uh, industry. Um, so it's a very, very powerful approach. Uh, what do you need to do? You, you, need a, you need a solid methodology uh, to bring you from and com to, to combine all those different views that you need to, to align early on. Um, from the market view, from the customer view, uh, all the way down to what does it mean to my product. You need to bring those people together uh, and those disciplines and those views uh, and come up with an with a, um, with a aligned approach how to reduce complexity early on, uh, come up with a blueprint. Um, and since this, as you saw, is a, is a very <laughs> um, complex interacting thing, those are like, like your chess figures on your, on your big screen. So they are all interacting. So when you inject a new variant or think about injecting a new variant, what does it mean to my product? And how can, can I avoid it? How can I reduce uh, the impact of this uh, new requirement? Maybe reduce it to, to one or two modules instead of changing the whole product. So those are the things and discussions you need to, to have up front. Um, and since it's a, it's a complex task, um, what is very helpful, um, that's what we, what we found out early, um, you, you need some tools to, uh, to really model these interactions. Um, so there are many tools out that manage requirements and others that manage functionalities and others that manage the product uh, configuration and the, the, the bill of material and the cost and so on. But to really take decisions, what you, what you need is to, um, to, to bring, to create an end-to-end -end data model. As, um, as Hendrik said in the, in the presentation before, you need um, one single source of truth. Um, and you start out with an architecture model, uh, on a, which on a high level combines all those threats into, into one holistic picture um, and, and taking everybody on board. Um, and what that means, uh, is exa create exactly this end-to-end, uh, -end, this 360-degree data model that we, um, that we talked about before, uh, combining uh, from the requirements and the market demands all the way to the product uh, configuration, down to the bill of material, um, and uh, into the production, production possibilities and bill of processes, uh, which are then um, creating the basis for, uh, for industrialization later on. Uh, so you, you need that on a high level, and, and that's where the, the interaction with, uh, with the configured comes into the game. Uh, that, uh, that's kind of the, the, the blueprint that you need uh, to transfer then into, into the CLM world, um, and where it's operationally set up and where configuration management is really taking place. So the combination of, of this high-level architecturing approach plus the CLM um, for our, in our view, that's, that's the winning combination uh, and helps you systematically to, to manage complexity um, all, the, all the way down from the product idea and product definition all the way to the, to the manufactured order. So to, to sum up, uh, what, what are we seeing? Start out with your, with your product, your, your product portfolio. Uh, reduce complexity where, wherever you can because it will multiply down the line. Uh, you need to think about streamlining of the processes and the, and the data chain behind. Um, you need to think about your organization, who's responsible for that. Uh, very often that is the biggest challenge uh, to really get the, the, the organization uh, um, on board as well. And, and then of course you think about technology and, uh, and about powerful tools that really support this, this type of activities. Uh, but uh, to be successful, we, we need to address the full stack that you see in the presentation. Uh, product, organization, processing and data, and technology. And whenever you got stuck in, uh, in, in complexity or, uh, or threatened to do so, give us a call. Thanks for your attention.